Warning, the power supply type showcased in this video uses mains voltage and is not galvanically isolated. Mishandling of the power supply can lead to fatal injuries. As you can see, I'm currently working on an ADtiny microcontroller project, of which I do not want to share any details yet. So as a replacement, let's just upload an LED blink sketch to the ADtiny that, like the name implies, lets an LED blink. Now the main problem is how to power this small AD tiny project through mains voltage, while keeping the power supply small and also cheap. The most common solution would be to use a switched mode power supply, like for example this one. Pretty much all power supplies you buy nowadays feature such a switched mode power supply, because they are very efficient. By simply connecting it to the power grid, the mains voltage gets moved out, chopped up, transformed into a lower chopped up voltage and finally filtered in order to get a beautiful DC voltage on the outputs. But as you can see in this functional principle diagram, which also comes with a feedback system, switch mode power supplies are not that simple to build and require quite a lot of components, which is not only relatively expensive, but also takes up too much space in comparison to my AD Tiny project. So in this video, we will have a closer look at a capacitive dropper circuit, which is a low cost, low component count transformerless mains power supply, which is certainly a lot more dangerous to work with, but also gets the job done without a problem. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where you can get 10 professional PCBs with any solder mask color you like for the low price of only $2. So feel free to upload your Gerber files today to order your PCBs from JLC PCB. To start off, let's replace our AD Tiny load, which draws a variable current between 8 to 12 milliamps at 5 volts with a simpler constant load like an LED. This blue one draws around 5 milliamps at 3 volts. Now if we have a higher voltage, like for example 15 volts, we would only need to add a resistor in series with the LED. Since 12 volts would need to drop across it and we want a current flow of 5 milliamps, the resistor value would calculate to 2.4 kilo ohms. After building up the real life circuits with the proper resistor value, we can confirm that our calculations were correct. So in theory, we should be able to create the same circuit with 230 volts mains AC voltage. After once again calculating the correct resistor value, I created the circuit and hooked it up to the power grid, which as you can see powers the LED just fine. The only problem is that we waste 1.135 watts of power as heat through the resistor, while the LED only uses 0.015 watts, which is highly inefficient. With a DC circuit, we would need to create a switching circuit to efficiently drive the LED, but with an AC circuit, we can use a little trick, which consists of replacing the resistor with a capacitor. The reason is that the capacitor creates a reactance when used with an alternating voltage, which is kind of like a resistance. But feel free to watch my basics video about impedance to understand this topic better. Anyway, after using the reactance formula of a capacitor to calculate its capacitance so that we get an apparent resistance of 45.4 kilo ohms. I got a value of 0.0701 microfarads. So I used a 0.068 microfarad MK10 capacitor, which is an impulse capacitor that can handle short voltage spikes, which come with a higher voltage. Usually you would use so-called X2 safety capacitors for such a circuit since they can handle such impulses as well and also tend to fail as a short 
so that the protection devices of your house wiring can interrupt the current flow. But nevertheless, after building up the circuits and hooking it up to mains voltage, it seems like I made a small mistake. Because no matter what I tried, the LED always blew up. It seems like the inrush current of the circuits is too high for the LED. That is why I started searching for devices which use capacitive dropper circuits to better understand how to build them properly. The first one I found was this GU10 LED spot that apparently uses up to 60 LEDs in series in order to decrease the voltage the capacitor has to drop. And after destroying the glass enclosure of the lamp, I had a closer look at the main PCB. As expected, we got a big capacitor, but also a full bridge rectifier, power resistor, smaller resistors and a big electrolytic capacitor. But all in all, this was not quite the circuit I was looking for. So next, I found this RF remote activated socket, which after opening its housing, looked pretty promising. Not only was there no visible transformer, but it also came with a big 0.33 microfarads X2 rated capacitor. That is why I removed the circuit from its enclosure and followed the mains power lines through the circuit in order to create a schematic for it. After simplifying my resulting schematic a bit, it looked like this. First off, we got a fuse, which will blow up if something goes wrong. Next, we got the capacitor, which provides our apparent resistance. And parallel to it, we got two 110 kilo ohm resistors, which will discharge the capacitor once power is no longer applied. On the other mains voltage wire, we got a 550 ohm 1 watt resistor, which may introduce real power loss to the circuit, but is necessary to limit the inrush current of the capacitor. The reduced mains voltage then connects to a full bridge rectifier, which turns our voltage from AC to DC. Next, a Zener diode clamps this DC voltage to a specific maximum, like 5.1 volts, and at the end we got a big electrolytic capacitor to smooth everything out. And just like that, the circuit turned 230 volts AC to 5.1 volts DC. So I gathered a couple of components I had laying around and built up the just described circuit, only with a few changed values for the components. As soon as my test circuit was complete, I hooked it up to mains voltage and measured the voltage on the output, which was around 5.1 volts. Perfect. The circuit drew 10 milliamps while doing nothing, which makes mathematical sense. Because if we use the reactance of the capacitors and combine it with the resistance of the inrush current resistors to calculate the overall impedance, then we can calculate a current flow of, not surprisingly, 9.95 milliamps when using a voltage value of 233 volts AC. That means we can only draw a maximum of around 10 milliamps at the output of the circuits. Otherwise, our stable 5.1 volts would break down. Don't believe me? Well, let's hook up the AD Tiny project we started with, which, like I determined at the beginning, draws 8 to 12 milliamps. As you can see after powering the circuit, the AD Tiny project works fine. But by checking the voltage with a multimeter, we can see how it breaks down quite a bit. To get rid of this problem, we can add another capacitor in parallel, which increases the overall capacitance and thus decreases the reactance. This way, we should be able to draw around 12 milliamps of current, which as you can see, seems to be correct, and reduces the breakdown of the output voltage. If we require more current though, we would need higher capacitances and thus also physically bigger capacitors, which are not only quite expensive, but also do not save a lot of space. 
Combine that with the fact that the created power factor of such capacitive droppers will always be terrible and you realize that such power supplies are only intended for small loads. By the way, if you didn't understand why a poor power factor is not desirable and basically strains our power grids, then have a look at my basics video about reactive power. Anyway, my capacitive power supply works just fine. But as you might have noticed, I only come in contact with it through rubber gloves. The reason is that if the live and neutral wire is correctly hooked up to the circuit, then the small 5.1V output voltage is referenced to neutral and thus earth, so everything is fine. But since we can easily turn the mains voltage wires around, which by the way does not influence the functionality of the circuits, we now have 5.1V reference to the live wire, which can lead to fatal injuries if touched. That is why capacitive dropper power supplies are super dangerous and should always be positioned inside a closed housing. Switched mode power supplies, on the other hand, feature a galvanically isolated output, meaning it does not come with a dangerous potential to earth, which we could touch. And with that being said, you should now be familiar with capacitive dropper circuits and understand why you should never touch them with bare hands. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.